Income tax 2023-2024. Certain business expenses of reservists performing artists and fee basis government officials. Tax software example. Get ready and some coffee because tax preparation is like a choose your own adventure novel. Except every choice leads to more paperwork. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one. Because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise so you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Form 1040 example problem using LACERT tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to tax software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting with our standard starting point, our taxpayer, Adam Taxman, just trying to avoid a dang taxman. <laughs> Living in Beverly Hills, 90210, single filer, no dependents. Starting with our W-2 income, the nice round 100,000 to start off with. Standard deduction at the 13,850, that gives us taxable income. 86,150, which we can mirror over here on our income tax formula. 100,000, 13,850, 86,150. The tax being calculated by the software is currently at the 14,266, which we can see on page two of the form 1040. Let's go back to page number one. Our focus here is on what I would call the above the line deductions, otherwise known as the adjustments to income. And you can also possibly call them these days the Schedule 1 deductions, not to be confused with the below-the-line deductions or the, the standard or itemized deductions. Standard or itemized deductions being more commonly known than most of the items in the adjustments to income. But the adjustments to income are very important even if people are taking a standard deduction because if you qualify for them, you can still get a tax benefit even though you don't have itemized deductions over the standard deduction. So let's go to that schedule one. This is where they are located. We're on, this is the additional income and adjustments to income. We want the adjustments to income. Therefore, page two is gonna give us part two, the adjustments to income. We're focused on line 12. Certain business expenses of reservists, performing artists and fee-based government officials. Attached form 2106. Now, let me give you a quick kind of history of this to try to see if I can solidify the concept of this a little bit more in our minds because the use of 2106 form has changed a little bit over the years and people will probably have questions about their remnants. People often have old remnants of tax laws that have been around before, you know, and then they confuse that with the current laws and they changed. So let's give a little bit of, of, of detail here. If I go to the Schedule C, you will recall that the Schedule C is for a sole proprietor business, typically. It's in essence an income statement, having income minus expenses, expenses being basically business deductions. Uh, so note that this is the easiest way to kind of conceptualize what the income tax system will typically or should look like. In other words, if we have an income tax system, it doesn't make sense for us to tax the top line. If they made 100,000 of income, we wouldn't tax the 100,000 of income if they had to expend, let's say the 80,000 in order to generate the 100,000 of income. They wouldn't even have the money to pay the taxes if you tax them at gross income instead of net income. So any expenses that we had to actually spend in order to generate the income, you would think those would be ordinary necessary expenses allowed as deductions so that the net income is the thing subject to tax. We could see that most clearly on the form 1040. What about if you're a W-2 income? Con conceptually, it's the same kind of thing. 
we would think from an income tax system, whatever you had to expend in order to generate this 100,000 W-2 income would be deductible. But we would think in this case that the, that the employer provided those things and that's why you don't typically get a deductions for business expenses if you're a W-2 income. That's the assumption that is made. And the other assumption is that if you did have your own expenses, well, maybe that can be included as part of this big lump sum kind of uh, standard deduction. Now, in some industries, the employer does provide all of the expenses and whatnot. And you're like, okay, that's fair. But in other industries, you might be like, hey, wait a second, I totally do a lot of my own expenses that I pay out of pocket and their business expenses. So it seems kind of unfair in other cases, right? So you, you have this problem with uh, the income taxes with this kind of W-2 uh, type of situation. Now, it used to be that if you had W-2 expenses, you might get some benefit from them with the use of, uh, of that Form 2106, right? And it would feed into then the Schedule A, which was not above the line, but an itemized deduction. So it could have flown into here and then you had you had miscellaneous deductions that might be able to be pulled through or more likely to be pulled through. A few years ago, they really reduced the use of that and the ability to do that. And I think this was in part to simplify the tax code. They increased the standard deduction possibly to help compensate for that uh, kind of situation. And also the people that were really utilizing that were usually people that are already itemizing, which are usually well-off, more well-off individuals, at least people that have an ownership of a home that's fairly high in value with a mortgage that has mortgage interest and property taxes on it, because those are the things that would push people over from the standard deduction to itemized deduction. So you can kind of see why they, they changed that possibly because, again, it's confusing. It's also kind of, it's hard to see if they actually would be qualified on one person's W-2 income versus another person's W-2 income. And it was probably more beneficial to more well-off uh, individuals. So they basically removed that and they left just some remnants of it, which is what we have now. So if I go back then to the schedule one, page number two, that's why it's limited here to uh, expenses for reservists, performing artists and fee-based government officials. So most likely the question you'll get in practice is, well, I used to deduct all this stuff for my W-2 income as an itemized deduction, or I know someone that did it 10 years ago or, you know, whatever, five, you know, and they used this 2106 and had an itemized deduction. And you're going to have to note that there's a change in the rules. But if you have reservists performing artists and fee-based government officials that fall specifically into that exception category, then you might have this above the line deduction. That's kind of the compromise that we saw. So if I jump into this then, you could see I'm going to jump to it. We have the reservers performing artists. So if I jump here, it's going to go boom. So here, if I go into the performing artists, it's going to go here and then the fee based uh, government officials. So let's go to the reservists first. So we're going to go reservists. And if you have someone in like the military or reservist uh, situation, oftentimes there's differences basically in uh, the tax code. So if they if if they had items that for that needed to be reimbursed, it's they might have the about the ability to take the deduction for them. Now, there's always kind of an issue between things like meals and entertainment, whether it's fully deductible or uh, local transportation, whether it be something that's going to be deductible as transportation, in which case, is it 50% limited, or it's fully deductible? I'm not going to get into the details of that now. But let's let's say that we had transportation just to add this of 100. Let's put let's put like, like 1000. Okay, that's a nice round number. Let's go to the <laughs> to the forms. And hold on a sec, I'm going to mark that it's all uh, something that could be included net unreimbursed travel expenses. So we're going to say that they were not reimbursed. I find that oftentimes in this kind of military situation, they might have been uh, reimbursed. So obviously, if we talked about that in a prior presentation, but if they were reimbursed for it, then you may not get a deduction for it because you got reimbursed for it. So there was so there's the uh, 1000 line 12. That's going to sum up down below that's going to pull into the first page of 
the form 1040. So now we've got the 100,000 minus uh, the adjustment to income gives us uh, the 99,000. And th then the standard deduction 13,850 brings us to the 85. Uh, 150. Now we could add that over here and add the form 2106, uh, but I think that's a fairly rare one. So I don't think I'm going to adjust it this time. We might take a look at it uh, at a future point and adjust to our worksheet at a future point. But your options would be to add another schedule for that form 2106 or possibly include it in just the adjustments to income worksheet. Uh, for those line items. So I'm going to go back on over and let's just look at the other example. So that, of course, changed the tax on page two, 1446. Let's go back to page one. Let's go back to the schedule and then let's go to page two, jump to that one. So I'm just going to say D -d reservist. D -d let's delete this. Boom, boom. And let's go to the performing artist so the performing artist i'm going to say that this is going to go to the form uh 2106 and we're going to say it's for a qualified performing artist so i'll say okay number one qualified performing artist and again i'll put the same uh travel down here to do, do, do travel overnight 1000 okay let's pull that back on over so now, once again, certain business expenses, reservists, performing artists, fee-based government officials, same kind of thing. It's pulling in here from the Form 2106. Let's look at the Form 2106. That's the employee business expense. So we've got column number A, travel expenses while away from home overnight, including lodging, airfare, and so on. There's our total expenses. Uh, reimbursements enter the reimbursements we're not going to have any reimbursements we're going to say figure the expenses to deduct and at the end of this we're getting that 1000 which is pulling into the schedule one so here we have it on the schedule one page number two and that pulls into the first page of the form 1040 all right let's do it again i'm back on schedule one page number two i'm going to jump to this one again and say do, do, do. so now I'm going to say let's say we get rid of this one uh, delete delete and then I'm going to jump again and just see the last bit oh you know it deleted my I can't get to the form page number two but boom jump jump 21 jump street <laughs> God. why why Okay, so now we're looking at uh, the the qualified performing artist handicap fee based. So this would be the third fee based government official. And then again, we could do the same thing 1000 down here and going back to the forms. And so there's the 1000 pulling in from form 2106. So here's 2106. Duh, 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 duh. And this occupation is kind of wrong. It should be, you know, related to armed forces, qualified performing artists, or fee-based state or local government official. That's the data input you put for their occupation, which you would think would line up uh, with this deduction and so on and so forth. That pulls in to the schedule one, page number two. There's the 1000, which is gonna pull into the form 1040, page number one, adjustment to income there. So that's the general idea. So in overview, just note that these kind of W-2 income, you're often going to get the question of, well, I expended my own money on this, that, and the other thing. Don't I get a deduction for it? It's not fair that my friend over here gets a deduction just because they're a sole proprietor and they're basically doing uh, the same thing. And it's like, well, yeah, you, you used to be able to possibly get itemized deductions before, but you would have had to itemize and they changed the rules for that and restricted it greatly. There are pros and cons to being a W-2 employee versus a sole proprietor. One of the benefits of a W-2 employee uh, is that you, you, it's usually a little bit more uh, uh, less risk that you're taking on and so on and so forth, but you don't typically get to take on deductions that you spend because the assumption is that the employer spent them. The sole proprietor is taking on more risk and 
they, the benefit is they get to make the deductions, which are business uh, deductions. They also have that issue with the self-employment tax being both the employer and employee portion taxed. So we talked more about that in a prior presentation. But if you're in this very restricted area, then you might still be able to get those deductions if they qualify, which is, is not often the case. But if you find that reservists, performing artists, and fee-based government officials, you want to be quite aware of those categories of uh, income because they have the benefit of still possibly being able to use the Form uh, 2106, pulling it into not itemized deductions, but adjustments to income, meaning that you could get a tax benefit for them, even if they're not uh, itemizing the thing that pushes people over to itemize being typically the ownership of a fairly well expensive home because you would need the interest of the mortgage to push you over as well as the property tax typically but you don't need that for the adjustments to income so that's that